and welcome to the What the Fork Monarchs preview show. Myself, Graham Muncy, joined by Dave Harley. Dave, after a couple of weeks on the road, we're back in the void here, back on the green screen, the white screen behind us. You know, we, we persevered the last couple of weeks. You did an excellent job in, in failing light conditions, shall we call it. At Plymouth last week and the, uh, the week before that, pool, it was like a scene out of prison movie. We were divided by a chain link fence, uh, so we couldn't get next to each other to do a show, but we did manage to get a couple of interviews up. So we have managed to keep everyone up to date. But this week, it's been a quiet week for the Monarchs, but we're back to what we're used to. We're back at Armadale. And a few weeks ago, what might have been a pretty routine looking fixture, set on up now as a revamped Kent head up north. Definitely. And with the introduction of Troy Batchelor, Trent of Kent of, of, um, of uh, strengthened significantly and looking a lot better, yeah. including that that match against us where they, they defeated us 46-43 last week, as you say. And uh, the conditions were good. When, well, there was enough light when the racing was on, but uh, yeah, <laughs> left it a bit late for the video cut. But no, but Troy Batchelor and uh, Scott Nichols in the yeah. team, you know, any team coming with it, that is going to be strong. And of course, Cameron Heaps, uh, ex-monarch, he's not had a great season this year, but uh, starting to pick up, fully picked up a few wins against uh, Berwick, and then yeah. won that crucial Heat 14 against us, so what a strength, and we've, we've seen Paul Stark score well at Armadale, so it's going to be a difficult challenge again, the the the, the Heat leader challenge, which has been the, the theme for the last three or four matches at Armadale, where the team's been matching us at at the top level, and uh, we'll need uh, Sam and the guys to get there, although I don't know in terms of Richie Worrell what, whether he'll be able to make it or not, but we'll need to be at our best, that's for sure. Yeah, you mentioned that there, obviously, Ken, a top four that particularly I would say Armadale, obviously we don't know how, how Batch will go, I, I can't remember if he's ever been at Armadale before, um, but certainly we know how good Scott Nichols is, we know how good Cameron Heaps is, and we know how good Paul Stark is as well. You know, there's three guys that all be looking for double digits, and at the bottom end, Dan Gilks, you know, he's had a, maybe a wee bit under the radar, but he's had a very good season as well, you know, under 19 European Championships, etc. on there. So it's going to be a tough challenge. You mentioned that the Monarchs side of the pits, we're still not 100% sure of the Monarchs line up as we record this. Uh, Richie Warrow, obviously, most people would have seen pulled out of the British final on Monday night. Um, and there's been a, a wee revamping of the lineup for the Monarchs, I guess, just to cover in case Richie is out, Josh Pickering moves to five. Um, Richie moves up to three, and, and I guess that's just to balance out, should it be a guest or rider replacement? Um, and, and Josh, more than capable at number five, though, Dave. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it kind of makes sense a bit, you know, it's, uh, uh, excuse me, we know, we know Josh can do that job, and with the amount of Friday tracks, if Richie is unavailable, yeah. it'll be incredibly difficult to find a guest, and uh, you know, there's uh, four other matches on and the teams that are left, with all due respect to them, they won't be able to provide a rider of Richie's calibre. And, and we, as I said already, you know, we do need top-end strength for those races against Scott Nichols and Troy Batchelor. And uh, as you say as well, the other two are, are no uh, no slouches. But but with the way not only Josh is going, that Kai's been going the last few weeks, if he doesn't make it, then I think we do have enough strength even with Made a replacement, but obviously, hopefully, Richie is available. Yeah, of course, we'll wait to hear. So keep an eye out on the Monarchs social media and website. And you never know, as is the way when we record this on a Tuesday night, Dave. By the time this goes live and you're watching it, we may already know the lineup. So we may know <laughs> that already. I guess, you know, we've touched on it there and that. The top four battle looks to be pretty tight. Probably more than ever, then, that makes the the juniors and the, the second strings, the lower end of the team, even more key. You know, we've seen, I guess, some solid, maybe solid point scoring, if not pulling up any trees last week. I mean, it was at paid six for, for Willie, paid five or paid six for, for Nathan. Um, and Luke, of course, unfortunate, still, still looks for that first point. And we will hear from Luke a little bit later on, so we know how keen he is and we'll, we'll hear how keen he is to make sure that happens on Friday. But couldn't be more key. You know, Ben Morrowey, uh, with Alex Spooner coming in for Jake Milford as a guest. I think Jake's away on, on FIM duty. And as I mentioned, Dan Gilks. You know, young guys, a bit of experience with Ben Morley, but, but guys that won't have done him too many laps around Armadale. And I guess that's really where we're, we're going to need Willie and Nathan, maybe particularly, to step up this week. Yeah, that's that's what we need. As, as you say, the, the, the heat leader battle is one thing. So 
we need to make sure uh, that we're, we're not giving these guys that are coming to Armadale for the first time an easy ride and yeah. giving them points. You know, Willie, Willie and Nathan, need. Uh, they were both out practicing after after the meeting last week. They know that last week probably wasn't quite good enough from them, even though uh, Nathan did get that crucial point in Heat 14. Yeah. You know, we, we need to be better. So, uh, so it will, will be crucial to do well. And and hopefully it will be an opportunity for Luke, because I don't think he's been far away in some of those races, especially in the Heat 2s down at, at yeah. Poole. He was, it was only on the very last bend that he, he made a small mistake, which cost him a point. And and again, at Plymouth, he was, he was right in the mix in Heat 2. So I, I think he's getting close. So hopefully with that opportunity on Friday, I mean, I've no idea the the young guy that's coming in for Jake Mulford, you know, what his pedigree is, but uh, Dan Gilks, I think he has been there, but uh, he, these are the sort of guys that our rising star should be beating. We know uh, uh, Joe wasn't quite getting there, so yeah. we need to look to, be, look to be doing that. So a big challenge for Luke and that end of the team, but hopefully this will be the, the day they start to prove their worth. Yeah, and one that Luke is definitely looking forward to as we are here now. So we're joined on the What the Fork Monarchs preview show by Monarchs Rising Star Luke Crang. Luke, thank you very much for, for giving us your time here on a, a sunny midweek evening. Yeah, n- uh, no worries at all. Um, look forward to your questions. <laughs> so looking forward to Friday and it's uh, Kent that, that head up to Armadale. Now, I guess maybe a few weeks ago, this would have been viewed as a a hopeful sort of routine win for the team, but Kent have made a couple of changes. We've we've seen them bolster their top end, and and it's going to be an interesting match now. You know, the likes of Batch or Nichols, Heaps and Stark, and they're going to take some beating. Yeah, they've um, they've made a few changes, um, and they seem to have uh, stepped it up a little bit, to be honest. But the guys in the Edinburgh side, you know, the they know the place at the back of the hand, and the um, and, and our guys are pretty quick around there, so. Kent will obviously have to come out firing if they want to do anything to to the Edinburgh side. Yeah, and obviously, as a result of the rain, etc., you've only really had that one meeting for us last week, and you were out practicing after the meeting as well. So uh, you'll be hoping to get a good crack out on Friday and get some good laps around Armadale. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I, I, I struggled a little bit on on the Friday with with setups. I just couldn't find anything, and the the bike wasn't working during the meeting. And I just I, I had no confidence at all within the bike. Um, so that's why I thought I'd go out and have a few practice laps. I made a couple of changes, um, and I, I enjoyed it with the changes that I made. I felt like I had a bit more control of the bike, and I could kind of put it where I wanted to. But during the meeting, it was just kind of I was coming in the corners, and the bike was pulling me too hard, and I just my head was a bit fried with it, to be honest. So. I was, a bit, I was a bit gutted that I didn't score any points, which I, I was putting a bit of pressure on myself that I wanted to, but um, let's say I, I'd like to go on Friday and, and, and like to think I'll be able to score a few for the boys and, and, and contribute towards the score. Yep, and I think, obviously, you know, for, for anyone that's seen the, the, the away matches as well, you know, it's just it's just that wee turn that we need, isn't it? It's just that little bit of luck. We've seen, you know, races stopped when you're in front. We've seen three times Heat 2 was stopped at, at Plymouth when you're in a good position every time. I think it pulled probably just the heavy condition caught you out a little bit on the fourth bend of the last lap. And you know, were talking these these minuscule changes away from what will be a three or four point score when it finally comes. Yeah, it, it, like I say, it's, it, it's a big jump for me. I've been out of the sport for six years um, and I've, I kind of came back into the sport and within within a month or so, I'd, I'd obviously got this a sign up for, for Berwick within the National League. I've done one meeting for them and the next minute I'm, I've jumped up into the Premiership and it's just a big jump and it's all come about so quick. Um, but I'm, I'm still finding my feet and and I've got I know I've got a long way to go and it, it is going to be hard in, in obviously this league and I wasn't expecting it to be easy but I've got my work out and I'm willing to dig deep and, and obviously I know my ability within myself. I know where I can go with it if, if given the chance and, and the back and that I've got at the minute which which I've got quite a bit of it so it's, it's only time is going to, going to be my best part of um, call to, to, to get me up to speed with them. Yeah, and although I've not seen you at Armadale, it's, it will be about your fifth or sixth match with the Monarchs, I think, with, with those away matches we've had. Uh, are you fitting into the team nicely? The guys help me out? Yeah, the, but yeah, to, yeah, the team's, um, they're all good lads. Um, everyone's speaking to me and, and gives me as much help as they can. 
Um, but it's just I need a little bit more luck on my side and a little bit more confidence and, and more bike time to get, like I say, to get me going and, and, and get in the mix and, and hopefully get a few race wins and get some points. Yep, and then obviously it's a, a reasonably busy weekend. I think obviously Friday night you've got Armadale, then Saturday it's it's back down to sort of national we go over and I think I mean it's only your second not only be your second match for the Bullets and I guess that's maybe the only downside of the National League last year. We were talking about it um earlier on, you know, the Devils race on Friday and it's only their second match in two months. There's, you mentioned about getting lapped. It's very difficult when those laps are coming in the championship. Yeah, you know, it's the the matches seem to be pretty scarce to be honest. They're so spread out. Um and obviously I feel for the boys that are racing just just the National League because obviously they're sitting about and they've got machinery sat there and Obviously, I was fortunate fortunate enough to go to Berwick and score the, the, the paid max on my debut there, and that's obviously got um, Edinburgh looking at me, and I was lucky enough to get a team spot with these. But yeah, it, it, it is hard when you're just sat about and you're just expect to turn up to meetings and, and, and ride your bike where there's not a lot of practice facilities about where you can go to. Um, but luckily enough, I'm I'm heading up that way tomorrow. Um, I've got a practice track uh, by myself where I can go and have a few laps. Uh, I've got a few bit of tests. I've got an engine to test and stuff there, and it's it's quite a tight, small track as well. So that's going to help me out for Edinburgh as well. It's good to look getting prepped for a big weekend ahead, and we look forward to seeing it on Friday night. Um, and I'm sure we'll be cheering on those first points in the blue and gold as as well. Hope the Monarchs carry on that playoff push and uh, head for the playoffs. So look, Craig, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll speak to you over the weekend. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you. So Dave, you know, a pretty effervescent character is Luke, and we all know how determined he is. And you know, it's tough. It's you know, I think maybe you're right. He came back in the national league. He had that 15 point or well paid max, um, and you know, then he was he was snapped up pretty quickly. But even in heat twos, you know, a first bend in the championships, a different kettle of fish to a first bend in the the national league. And I think that's maybe just where where that little bit of sharpness is missing just now. But I'm sure it'll come, and there's definitely signs there for me as well. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it when we saw Tom Woolley come up from the Devils. You know, he's looking yeah. really good at the Devils and he really struggled in there. So it's it's, it's, a, it's a difficult challenge, especially coming in halfway through the season. But uh, as we, as I said already, and hopefully that enthusiasm pays off and get gets him some points on Friday night because he, he's certainly working hard enough for it, that's for sure. Yeah, and it's, you know, we all know now that it's, it's been confirmed that it's six teams into the playoffs, the top two, receive a bye, then, then the next four sort of race off against each other to make what become the semi-finals. And I'd say it would need a disaster for the Monarchs not to be in the top six. But, you know, we still want to go into those playoffs with confidence. There's still an outside chance, I would say, off the, the top two. We need to keep pushing. And, and first and foremost, as an unblemished home record, the rest of the way, it's not going to be easy. You know, we've touched on the, the strength of the Kent team. We've got teams like Poo and stuff to come. But... I guess over the course of the season, barring one or two results, we maybe been a wee bit underwhelming, unusually at Armadale, and we really need that to change and start with a marker down so that teams have that fear factor to come to Armadale come playoff time. Yeah, it's, it's been a strange season at Armadale from that respect. You know, as you say, every, every match has been close and tight. I think maybe apart from the one one, one match there we had where we, we yeah. did go and score 58. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's good for excitement on Friday night and... Uh, for league points, three points is all that matters. You know, you get to that 46, that's all that matters. But, yeah. but you know, come the end of the season playoffs, it's two legs. Despite our away form, we need to be putting our foot down at home and, and uh, as you say, make it, putting a marker down and dominating, which we have done in the past. And I think we're capable of, I don't just don't think we've all fired at home at the one time, you know, even looking last Friday night, you know, I, I know it was against... Uh, a strong heat leader pairing we were against there, but uh, Sam was under power, so he would have struggled yeah. against most teams. So that's an unusual for Sam not to be at his best, but uh, I'm sure he's, he's sorted out by the end of the meeting, so I'm sure that won't be a problem. But we always seem to have someone just not quite there. So it's a difficult challenge, but I mean, as you say, playoffs the main thing. And, and Kent, while well, they're bottom of the league, you know, they've, they've, they've made that change. And yeah. they've still got plenty of away matches, and they'll. This is possible a make or break weekend for them, you know. Armadale on Friday, as we've talked already with the, the specialists they've got, they've, 
they've got some good chance of points. Then they go to Berwick and Newcastle and their teams, if you want to be going to playoffs, you kind of need to be winning at yeah. tracks like this, especially in Kent's situation. So we've got them first, so there's nothing to lose against us. And and it's only a small chance, but uh, I'm sure the by by Monday by Monday they might be right back in it. But uh, yeah. you need to make sure that doesn't happen on Friday. Yep, and one way you can help the Monarchs team in doing that is by getting yourself trackside. Obviously, restrictions now almost all but gone, Dave. Certainly restrictions on numbers and stuff are now not an effect, and, and there's no kind of you can now walk freely around the stadium and stuff. So, you know, do get yourself along. We would still recommend you get your ticket in advance. Um, one of the, the slight restrictions we do have is track and trace information still required. So it just makes for a quicker and easier entry for you if you've got your ticket in advance because then you can just breeze straight up to the gate. We've already got all your details. Scan a barcode and you're in. If that's not possible for you, you can pay in cash, but just maybe give yourself an extra five minutes to go to the box office, which is next to the entrance gates first, just to get your ticket there and get your details taken before you head in. Of course, if you can't make it along, like all matches at Armadale this season, myself and Mike Hunter will be on the stream. And we had a pretty busy weekend on it last weekend, Mike, uh, sorry, Dave, between Friday night against Plymouth and then the British Youth Championships. I think I calculated it in something like 21 hours. It was 44 heats and five and a half hours or something of uh, broadcasting that we did. So it was a busy weekend for all involved, but we all enjoyed it. Um, so we're looking forward to another weekend. So as I say, if you are heading along, I would advise get your tickets nice and early on the Edinburgh Monarchs website. The tickets link there. You can pay in cash on the gate on the night. But if you can't make it along, join us on the stream. Again, the EMTV link on the Monarchs website. Dave, a slightly unusual situation on Friday and that for the first time this season and maybe the first time ever, I can't remember if it happened back in 2004, 2005, the Armadale Devils are racing at the exact same time as the Monarchs. Uh, away from home, obviously, they're down at Bellevue. And another tough looking fixture, particularly, obviously, as they'll be missing Nathan Graves. I believe it's Kyle Bickley that's going to step in. But another chance for these guys to get track time. One of the probably the negatives of the, the National League this year is how few and far between the fixtures are, particularly with so many clubs having front-loaded National League fixtures while they had restrictions on crowds and stuff. So, I mean, I think this will only be about the second match in, in about two months for some of these guys. But another chance to impress and a track that if anyone watched the British final on Monday that everyone should enjoy going and having a, a big spin round. Yeah, I'm sure the, the guys going down will be loved love and uh, opportunity to race at the National Speedway Stadium. It's a uh, fantastic track, great facilities, and uh, it should be a good meeting, good opportunity for the boys, finally. You know, as, you, as you talk about, unfortunately, that Eastbourne meeting, uh, excuse me, cancelled. And yeah. so I think it, got, it feels like it was almost two months since we signed Archie Freeman and it's still not yeah. raced. A, yeah, because he missed the Rodden Hall meeting, of course, as well. Yeah, he was he was he was missing that day, so he'll be there. And, yeah. and if anybody is gone, I think they're also running a British Youth Championship, another leg okay. of that. Yeah. The same thing that was on Saturday, featuring Steen Piper again. So he's he's looking really good for that. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, plenty of speedway if you're going to be down that way. Obviously, what you really should be doing is if you if you are stuck in Manchester, watching that with a uh, with the stream on on your laptop, sitting <laughs> watching at the same time. But uh, rather see you, Armadale. But, yeah, yeah. Sounds good, good to, to me. The, the Devils. Yeah, good luck to the Devils down there. Uh, Dave, that's just about it for another week. We're back and well, I was going to say a normal situation, but we're actually not quite the, the white screen there, but the fact that you've jaunted off on another break. I don't know quite where you find the, the time or the miles to do all this, but you know, you get yourself about that's for sure. But before we finish up, as always, it's uh, Mike Hunter's blast from the past and a double dose this week. First up, we'll go back to 1998 and Scotland versus England under 21s and uh, look out for a, dare I say, Very a young... Fresh yeah. I was going to say, it's in the under 21, so that gives the game away, but a young Scott Nichols. And in prior to that, we'll go even further back, 1984. It's the uh, Edinburgh Monarchs against the Canterbury Crusaders from a somewhat soggy powder hall with a very fresh-voiced Mike Hunter on commentary. Enjoy. Well, this is heat number... Six and it is absolutely mouthwatering. Kevin Little, home heat leader with his Ebart Monarchs, rides from gate one for Scotland. Scott Nichols with a thrilling win in his first ride, rides from gate two for the England under 21 side. Gate three, the highly experienced Scottish captain Kenny McKenna, 
always favourite to make the gate no matter where he starts from. And the dashing young talent of Grant McDonald for England coming from gate four. Should be an absolute cracker. Predictions are maximum for Scott Nichols, but to do that he's got to beat this Scottish pair. Kevin Little's made the start, Kenny McKenna looking for the run round the outside and he's got there. Look at that second corner by McKenna, he's gone to the front, Nichols comes thundering round the outside in sensational style as well. But Little's still there, battling with Nichols. Nichols looking for the gap, going for the one down the middle again as he did last time. McKenna just ahead, but Nichols right on his tail, having squeezed ahead of Little. <coughs> McKenna still leads, two laps gone. Nichols is right there, going for the inside line this time. McKenna squeezes past again, what a tremendous battle. Into the third turn, McKenna holds it tighter this time. Drifts out to the wide line. And McKenna still a half a wheel ahead going into the last lap, holding the line, using all his guile and experience. Nichols with his dashing youthfulness, looking for the gap. Locks up a bit there, I think that might give McKenna his chance. And McKenna takes a fabulous victory with Kevin Little snapping at their heels. What a wonderful race that was. Tremendous speedway. McKenna didn't make the start. He came round the opposition on the first corner. And we saw a three-man battle to match anything we've seen this season. Absolutely great speedway there. The crowd respond. Two heats to go then. Canterbury leading by three points. And we can only hope that no one's injured in this ridiculous contest. The riders in this race from the inside are Lambert, Luckhurst, Fiora and Mogridge. And that's a tremendous start by Lambert. It was very tight on the first corner, mud all over the place. Lambert leads. Fiora trying to come into second place, but Luckers drives past him and drives past Lambert as well. Riders all over the track and Luckers taking the lead. An enormous puddle there the riders go through. Luckers completely out of control there. Luckers very hard into that corner, remarkably retains control. And Luckers bike leaps through the air. This is totally ridiculous. Luckers taking far too many chances. Simply in order to win the match for his team which he may well succeed in doing, but it's still absolutely ridiculous and very dangerous indeed. And there's Roger Lambert piling into the fence. This is absolutely disgraceful. This is an absolute farce. Lucker swillies over the line, and this match is totally out of control. I've never seen anything like this in well over 20 years of watching Speedway. This is absolutely ludicrous, and the referee must take responsibility for this farcical situation. And once again, we seem to be fortunate in that Roger Lambert is up. But anything could happen in these conditions. Dave, uh, we'll be hoping for no repeat of those conditions this weekend. Certainly, I don't think you'll get a meeting anywhere near on these days in that kind of track or those kind of conditions. No, definitely. I wouldn't like to hear the likes of Rory Schlein's uh, thoughts <laughs> of him when the track was presented like that. So, uh, unbelievable conditions that they actually still <laughs> carried on. And, <laughs> but uh, yeah, fantastic back back in the days, and and obviously Scott Nichols looking looking really good. We we saw some cracking races when he was here in two thousand nineteen. Yeah. So it's it's going to be a challenge. For this year. Yeah, you know, back in the semi final of the British final on yeah. Monday, we got unlucky there not to not not to go further. But uh, it's always uh, always good value. That's for sure, Scott Nichols. And uh, yeah, so a big. Big Friday night always ahead, as Steve mentioned there. Scott Nichols, Troy Batchelor, Cam Heaps, Paul Stark, battle off against your Monarchs heroes. Get yourself on track set if you can. If not, join us on the stream. But until we are back with the Friday Focus to review all the action, thanks for watching and goodbye.